Welcome back to Python scripting for GIS applications. This is a class at the University of Alaska Fairbanks and it's spring semester 2013. From last time your assignment was to come up with a Python field calculator script that will convert this string into a formatted string that has a dollar sign and then the dollar digits and then the two digits to the right of the decimal place re representing cents, and then write justify this, which is a 16 character string. So one way you could have done it was to use the field calculator. We'll make a little function. We'll pass this field as in string, and then use the dot find function to find the decimal place. And then we'll format our string as take everything to the left of the decimal place and then everything to the right of the decimal place two places. And then we'll use a dot write justify um, 16 characters with a space. So what we'll do is call this function. So we'll copy it. That way we won't make any spelling mistakes. And then we need to select the field we want to pass. So this is the field we're going to use as input. So we'll just double click on that field. Okay, and then okay to run that function. So it does add a dollar sign to each string. And then it throws away any characters beyond two to the right of the decimal. And then it does write justify it. 16 characters. Okay, so if you run this exact same function, you may not get the results depending upon what font you have set in ArcMap. So in order for this to appear this way, the font has to be a fixed font and not a proportional font. So for example, if I have my font set at Arial, which is a proportional font, I'll show you what it would look like. So to change fonts in ArcMap, if I go to Customize, ArcMap Options, and then under Tables, here we can choose whatever font we want. And once again, Courier is a fixed font, but for example, Arial is not a fixed font, it's a proportional font. So for example, with Arial, the amount of space a one character takes up is much less than the amount of space a two character or a three character takes up. So the result may not appear as if they're correctly right justified, but they are, it's just a function of, you need to use a fixed font as opposed to a proportional font to see that right justification. I can show you, for example, if we run that field calculator, I put in an asterisk rather than a space, and that way you can see how this field calculation is working. So indeed it does write justify it, and here we have our asterisk instead of our spaces. And if you had this font set to courier, then you would see that everything lines up correctly. Okay, in this video session, I'm going to teach you how to work with a special field that is a date time type. So for example, here we have a field representing the date and time of lightning strikes in June in Alaska. And up to now, we've dealt with fields that were um, floating point or double precision or character or integer. The type of this field is a date field. And there's Python functions that are made for date fields. So if we pull up the field calculator and Python and then just click on date, there's three functions 
that can be used with date fields automatically in Python. And you could also basically in the code book import a module called date time and that would allow you access to more date time functions. So what I'll do is I'll teach you about these functions in the Python shell. Okay, so here we are in the Python shell and what we'll do is we'll first import this module called date time. And I should mention that in ArcGIS, if you've got a shapefile, it can, can hold just the dates in a uh, date field. So if you have a shapefile, the date field will hold the year, the month, and the day. And if you have a geodatabase, the date field will hold the date and the time. So it will hold the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minutes, the seconds, and the microseconds. Okay, so one of the Python functions that's available in the field calculator is the date time dot now. And what that will do is return the time from your computer's clock, basically the year, the month, the day, the hour, the minutes, the seconds. So we'll store that in a variable called date time one. And then what is the type of that variable? So control C for copy and control V for paste. So the type is a date time object. And what we can do is extract the year, the month, or the day, and we can print it out. So we could say print that object dot year, that object dot month, that object dot day. So the year is 2013, the month is the third month of the year, and the day is the sixth day of the month. Okay, so these properties, what are the type of these properties? So let's say type, and then let's just pick the year, for example. So they're returning integer values. And likewise, you could use minute, seconds, or hour if you want to see from that date time object what is the hour, minutes, and seconds. So the hour is 8 a.m. and the minute is uh, 14 and then 36 seconds. Okay, another date time function that's available in the field calculator is this function dot uh, string format time. And what that will do is return a string. So this test variable will be a string. And then basically it will format that string depending upon the codes that you put in. So for example, if we put in a percentage D, that will return the day. And then if we put in some other character, I'll put in a character um, slash, it doesn't really matter. And then percentage M for month, and then I'll put in a character, a uh, couple dashes, and then percentage uppercase Y for a year. And I need to close my string. Okay. So then if we look at test, it's a string, and in that string is the day, so 0, 6, and the month, so percentage M, so that would be 0, 3, and the year, percentage Y, so that would be 2013. Okay, you can also extract either the time component or the date component from a date time object. So for example, we'll take this date time object and hit dot and it'll show us the functions applicable to it. And what we want to do is extract the date from this object. So then if we look at today, it's a date time object with a date property. And we could use this string format time to format 
this date any way we want. So for example, let's try lowercase d, lowercase m, and lowercase y as our codes. So percentage lowercase d, and then I'll put in a couple dashes, percentage lowercase m and a couple dashes, and percentage lowercase y. So that returns that string. If you want to know the month rather than a numeric character, you could use the uppercase B. So let me put a couple of dashes in here. So that returns, percentage B returns the month as a string character. And if we want to know the weekday name, we could either use lowercase a or uppercase a. So today is Wednesday. So lowercase a would be the abbreviated version and uppercase a would be the full name of the weekday name. And the month name would be lowercase b or uppercase b. And then if you want to know the Julian day, so how many days since January 1, that would be lowercase j. So March 6, 2013 is 65 days since January 1. Okay, so more string formatting of time, lowercase w and uppercase a. So lowercase w will give you as a string, what is the day of the week? So starting with, you know, Monday would be one, Tuesday would be two, and Wednesday would be three. And then if you're interested in 24-hour um, time versus 12-hour time, if, if I was beyond 12 o'clock, that would print out. This would be for 12-hour time, so for example, 1 p.m., and this would be for 24-hour time, so for example, 13 p.m. And then we could also have the a.m. versus p.m. using the percentage lowercase p. Okay, the other function that's available as a date-time function in the field calculator is the t dot time delta. So here we say, okay, we'll take our date time object and give us the result of what the date time is from yesterday. So subtract one day. So yesterday was March 5th and it was at 814. Okay, what was the date time an hour ago? So an hour before this date time one object or an hour from now so it'll be 9 14 in the morning so plus means go forward and a minus means go backwards so what will be the date time one year from now so 365 days forward so it will be 2014 and it'll be March 6th and it'll be 814. You can also subtract or add date time objects. So for example, let's make another date time object and that will be now. And then we'll subtract that object from our original date time object that I created at the beginning of this video session. So then what's the type of this object? So it's a time delta object. So that object will have uh, different properties. So if we say dot, one of the properties is um, seconds. So how many seconds was it between the first object and the second object? So it's 780 seconds. And another thing we could do is dot and then total seconds. So that will include microseconds. So it's actually 780.719 seconds. And then if we had an object that's a couple days away, if we went dot and then days, that will tell us how many days there are between objects. And in this, this case, there were no days between objects. So we had date, 
time two, and we had date time one, and then basically we subtracted the two, and that gave us this object. So we could extract the difference in seconds, we could extract the difference in days, we can extract the difference in total seconds between those two objects. Your assignment for our next video session is uh, two parts. The first part is, in the United States, Groundhog's Day is February 2nd. So write a two-line Python script that will tell you what day February 2nd 2014 is on. So is it on a Sunday, a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, etc. So what you can do is make a date time object called Groundhog's Day and it will be 2014 February 2nd. And then the question is what day is Groundhog's Day in 2014? Okay the second part of your assignment is to create a list of date objects so for example, here I make the first item on my list, and then I put a backslash as a continuation uh, character, and then the next item on my list, and a backslash as my continuation character. So now I've got a list of floods, and then I could print these out. So for flood in my list of floods, print flood. Okay, so the first flood was August 1, 1967. The next flood was May 15th, 1989. All the way down to the last flood was July 21, 2008. So your assignment is to write a script that reports these flood years and then calculates and reports how many years is it between flood events. And I'll go over the solution to that problem in the beginning of our next video session.